The action started in 2016, that was the first time we did the action, it's called the anti columbus Day Tour. Um, the first time when we did the action it was only Decolonize This Place and NYC Standard Standing Rock that collaborated on the action and uh, this year, which is 2018, uh, we have about 12 groups that came together to do this action. There's a twofold kind of a thing when we come inside the museum. One is for all of us to hear each other, which was at the assembly. It was for us to actually build these relationships, to actually think of each other, each of our struggles. Not that we're trying to hear, say, one's oppression is the other, like how are we actually coming together? And then for the people who come and witness, that we are here, <laughs> you know, that people are not living in the past, that this needs to happen now. History is now. This is the second year that BYP 100, the New York City chapter, has participated alongside Decolonize's Place in the anti columbus Day Tour. It's really built out on two important historical nodes, one being in the 70s, uh, Native activists defacing the Roosevelt statue which stands behind us and being arrested for that. And then in 2015, BYP 100 led a blackout tour at this museum, going through several halls and re-narrating um, resistant histories of black diasporic life um, that is in face in the museum. And so it's really emerged out of our commitments to black liberation, as well as engaging in solidarity struggles with indigenous peoples. Um, here at the museum, similar to how we organize at Decolonize This Place, we find different halls of issues that are expressed. And what we want to do is connect those halls through a lens of settler colonialism. And that's why we are all over the museum today. We have the Hall of African Peoples and African Mammals, Asian People and Asian Mammals, and so on. But there is no Hall of European Peoples, right? There's no Hall of European Mammals. Right, because that's called history, that's called science. So we're here to bring awareness to how knowledge and history is constructed um, in both like a pedagogical way, but also through direct action. And when I'm in this museum, I think of the school children, the black and brown and indigenous school children in New York City who hope to leave the oppressive environment of their classroom and standardized testing and having history that they know is not their own forced down their throat. And when they come on a field trip, they expect to be liberated. They expect to have fun. They expect to be excited. But instead, what happens is they get here and they, too, find themselves in the shadow of these oppressive monuments. They find themselves staring at their ancestors through glass, whereas the colonizer's ancestors get statues. So for Chinatown Art Brigade, um, we see that our peoples here are displayed next to animals um, and minerals and are part of a history at this museum of displaying uh, other cultures in a, the framework of eugenics and the framework of white supremacy. So we don't see that, uh, we don't want the objects of our, of our ancestors and of our peoples or anyone's peoples to be stolen as there are 60,000, more than 60,000 objects from this exhibit that have been stolen through colonial expeditions. Um, and they use a lot, very different language to describe how these objects were obtained, but every single piece in this exhibit was stolen. We're calling on the museum to repatriate these objects to where they came from. We're also calling on the museum very specifically to make that information available, transparent, and on display at every single display here. We demand! We we're talking about changing the entire structure of the institution. And so it's not just about, you know, being able to hire, you know, one black uh, curator or like one indigenous curator, but to actually change the entire way the institution's functioning.